So Keith Law, formerly of ESPN, now with The Athletic, just dropped his top 100 MLB prospects going into the 2022 season. Keith Law has been doing the prospect game for a while, but I've seen a little bit of this list on Twitter thus far, and uh, there's some things I gotta talk about here. So I'm gonna go through the entire top 100. Link to the article will be in the description down below. And I'm gonna give you my thoughts and opinions on it. I've been covering prospects a lot more recently on the channel, especially the last few years, but specifically now, I've been going through every position covering the top 10 at each position in minor league baseball. So make sure you guys are subscribed so you don't miss out on that content because I'm going to have the second base video dropping later this week. Now for Keith Law's top 100 it is worth noting that if you do not qualify for the rookie of the year vote this upcoming season, you are not on this list. So a guy like Caber Ruiz will not be featured. Good to know. So let's scroll down all the way to the bottom and find out who is going to be at number 100. Of course, not going to go through every single player, just the ones that I feel like commenting on. So Alex Ramirez comes in at the number 100 spot of the New York Mets and I'm a Mets fan. Clearly, I don't agree with this one. I don't think Alex Ramirez is a top 100 prospect right now. That being said, his size, his build can lead to being a top 100 prospect in the future based on his play and what he's accomplished thus far. I feel like this is extremely aggressive. Something that Keith Law seems to do a little bit. He was kind of early to the boat on Fernando Tatis Jr. I feel like he might be looking for a diamond in the rough here. He was one of the younger players in low A last year in the league that he played in, but that alone to me is not enough to make him a top 100 yet. There are guys who I think deserve it more. That's coming from a Mets fan. I'm just not sold on Ramirez being a top 100 prospect right this moment. Number 99, Jordan Groshans. Okay, yeah, I mean, him moving to third base kind of hurts him a little bit, but 99, I think, like, he's a top 100 borderline guy. That's fine. 98, Eddie's Leonard. If you guys don't know about him, I'm going to give you a little more in-depth on my top 10 second base prospect. So, yeah, I don't really think he's a shortstop. I think he's more of a second baseman. This is a really good ranking to have on here. A guy like Eddie's Leonard is someone you need to keep an eye out for. Super, super talented player. And, of course, the Dodgers. I mean, they just do this with everyone. 97, Drew Romo was not on my top 10 catchers, so I don't think as highly of Drew Romo as Keith Law does. It's understandable. Um, I'm just not completely sold on this guy being one of the better catchers. I think Andy Rodriguez is better. I think there are some other guys that are probably going to get a left off this list that I would choose ahead of him. 97, though, whatever. Again, it's like that 75 through 100 range. You could kind of be a little aggressive. 96, Jose Miranda. Real quick, you should be high on this guy. Again, I see him more as a second baseman. Really, really good hitter. 95, Oswald Peraza at 95 is actually like way lower than I thought because he hit really well, has pretty good speed, pretty good shortstop, all around good player. Just needs to lift the ball a little bit more, but we're going to see him do that. Oswald Peraza shocked at 95. I thought he would be maybe in like that 75 to 50 range. 94, Curtis Mead. Okay, whatever. 93, Nick Gonzalez. Yeah, this one surprises me. I mean, also the fact that he was on ranked last year, but this dude mashes in a good organization in the Pirates for the minors. I am truly shocked he's this low. I th would have thought Nick Gonzalez is like, honestly, inside the top 50. I'm a huge Nick Gonzalez fan. Dustin Harris, 92. If you saw the first base video, love this guy. I don't know if I put him top 100 yet, but he's really, really interesting as a prospect. Okay, 89, Kevin Smith. I vehemently disagree with this one. Blue Jays fans, I just don't see how a 25 year old who's kind of struggled recently, gets into the top 100. I think he's going to be a fine Major League Baseball player. Saw him come up and do some stuff last year, but top 100 ahead of guys like Nick Gonzalez, even Jordan Groshans in his own organization. I don't think Kevin Smith's a top 100 guy. I also don't think Sal Freilich's a top 100 guy. I, Brewers fans, I promise I like your prospects, but Sal Freilich to me is not the guy. Like, Garrett Mitchell better be ahead of him. Joey Weimer better be ahead of him. Like, I just don't see the ceiling with Sal Freilich, and I like ceilings when I talk about prospects a lot of the times, and for me, he's Brett Gardner. He struggled in high A, did really well in low A, I don't see what kind of player he can truly be at the MLB level outside of like a solid outfielder. I don't know. To me, 88 feels aggressive. I wouldn't put him in my top 100. Brandon Fat and Arizona Dimeback guy. Uh, Dimeback's pitchers have been aggressive. I've seen him in this kind of range as well and a lot of other lists. That's fine. Brian Bello or Bayo. I don't really know much about this guy, but he says he throws 100 and has a slider that's about 90. If that's the case, sure. But of course, the reliever risk is worthy of being mentioned. 86. Okay. Uh, yeah, Brewers fans, again, I, I promise I don't hate your prospects. There's a lot that I like, but Bryce Terang is not one of them. He just really hasn't ever performed well. He's a good glove. He probably can play multiple positions at a pretty high level, but the bat has never developed into what you were hoping for a guy who's been the minors for four years. So I, I really don't think Bryce Terang's a top 100 guy. I'm actually shocked he moved up in these rankings because to me, there's no reason for him to move. Dre Jameson at 84. This is a dude I had to do a little more research on. Um, I'm not sold on him being a top 100 guy just based on, again, what his ceiling looks like he can be. I don't think he's going to be a number two starter like he flaw predicts, but listen, Stroman type build, Stroman 
type pitcher. He gets a little more swing and misses, which is actually super encouraging and doesn't walk a lot of guys. But the idea is that he doesn't have this unbelievable stuff. Okay, I don't know. 84, probably not for me. Rowanzi at 83. Now, this is a guy who's a stud who's got electric stuff. I love this ranking. I also love the ranking of Kyle Harrison at 82. Another guy who's extremely talented. Great pick by the Giants. Great organization. He's a stud. Keep an eye out for him. Okay, at 80 and 79, we have Joey Barton, Shea Longoliers going back to back. I really like Longoliers. I'm liking him more and more as I look into his stuff. I think this is a fair rating as well as where he put Joey Bart. Like, that's cool. I'm, I'm cool with them being around here. 78, let's talk about the Martian, Yason, Jason Dominguez. He's dropping. A lot of people are dropping him. Here's why. I think he was probably too hyped when they got him because he was supposed to be the next Mickey Mantle, the next Mike Trout, and he's just not going to be that player. It doesn't seem like that's a likely outcome, but Jason Dominguez will probably be a very good major league player, all-star. That's still yet to be seen, but he's still really strong, still hits the ball really hard, still a very good athlete. I don't think he's going to be bad. I just think the baseball world and everyone has come to the consensus that he's not the next great prospect in Major League Baseball history. So yeah, 78, it's dropping in the ranking, but this is kind of where I see a lot of people putting him now, and I think that's fair. At 76, Andy Pagas, otherwise known as Andy Pages. Yeah, this guy's a stud. Just look at the numbers he put up last year. I think he hit 30 homers in the minors at 20 years old. Absolute friggin' stud. This guy's power is through the roof, and the Dodgers, they just don't miss. Andy Pagas, he's a dude who I think could be top 25 by the end of the year. I'm saying that. Yvonne Herrera at 75. I'm not a huge Yvonne Herrera guy. He doesn't really have the bat for me. That gets me excited. Get some decent power though last year, so that's cool. Good defensively. Cardinals strong catching organization. People like him, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be angry about this one. I'm just not a huge Yvonne Herrera guy. Ryan Nelson, another Diamondbacks dude. Gunnar Henderson, yeah, whatever. Matt McClain at 72. See, talk about ceiling, guys. I just I don't get it with Matt McClain. He was rumored to be a Mets draft pick last year. I didn't want him then. I think he's going to be, again, another guy who gets to the major league level is going to be good. It's not going to be a shortstop. He's going to be a second baseman. Good bat to ball skills, good contact, but the power and just like the, the tools are not really jumping off the page for me. So I don't really understand how he gets here at 72 ahead of a guy like Nick Gonzalez, who has great tools ahead of a guy like Eddie's Leonard, who's younger and better. I think right now I, I've said my piece about Matt McClain. I think he's solid, just not this high. I also don't think Mark Vientos is 71. I think if you're going to put Vientos in the top 100, he is in that 90 to 100 range. The power, the hit ability is definitely there but he's a man without a position. That's kind of tough to rank. He's not a third baseman. He's a first baseman, really, at the end of the day. Probably a DH if there's a DH in the majors next year. Like, I love Vientos' hit tool. I think he's a fantastic hitter, and you're going to be able to find a spot for him because of that bat. I just don't think he'll be at third base. I think that hurts his value. But sure, if you want to put him at third base, yeah, I, I don't know. It's interesting. 70, Elliot Ramos. Yep, that's fine. I've seen him drop a little bit. I still think he's very good. I'm still holding out hope for him. 69, Ellie De La Cruz. Nice. This Ellie De La Cruz guy is a stud. This is a dude who could become one of the top 25 prospects prospects in baseball by the end of the year. The size, the build, the Reds organization has done a great job developing. Ed Eli De La Cruz, keep an eye out for this dude. He's looked really, really good. Jose Tena, wow. Okay, I didn't expect to see Jose Tena this high because I like Gabriel Arias over Jose Tena and he was at AAA as a 20 year old and it seems like he values young age at a higher level. And for some reason, I haven't seen Gabriel Arias yet. So I'm hoping he's higher. Jose Tena, I have some cards of him. I think he's a good player. The Guardians just have a slew of middle infielders right now. So he'll he'll eventually get somewhere. And he's looked good. So Jose Tena, that's probably one of the more aggressive rankings I've seen of him. Campusano, 67. Yeah, he's around Longoliers, I think. I don't know if there's that much of a difference. Bryson Stott at 66. I'm cool with this one too. He seems like he's going to be a pretty good player. He's got really good size and has a good bat. The Phillies are going to be excited. Will he stick at shortstop forever? Uh, that's the question. 65, O'Neal Cruz. I'm shocked he's this low because I think O'Neal as a prospect is someone you should get really excited about. The exit velos are unreal. The athleticism is unreal. Will he be a shortstop forever? Probably not, but this dude can mash. And at 65, I think that's underrated for O'Neal Cruz. I think he should easily be top 50. 64, Yuri Perez, a guy who has blown up the ranks recently. He was so good last year in Miami. 6'8", and he throws absolute gas. Yuri Perez is a guy that I think is ranked fairly, and again, could be a top 25 by the end of the year with another full year under him. He's just sick. He's so talented. He's only 19. The Marlins pitching development is sickening. Sickening. It's so good. 63, Geraldo Perdomo. Yeah, I, I, I put him lower. I think he's good, but I don't put him at like 63. That's aggressive. Miguel Vargas. Yeah, this guy's a stud. Miguel Vargas is an absolute beast. Again, and another one of these Dodgers guys who came on last year and mashed, mashed, mashed. And that's what he does. He's really, really good. Defective from Cuba. They've just got all the Cubans that are just amazing. He's got serious power potential and he can play third base. I really like Miguel Vargas a lot. Michael Harris at 61. I kind of feel like that's the right area for him right outside the top 50. 60, Sam Bachman. Um, okay. Yeah, that's fine. I don't know if I'd put him 60. I think I'll probably have him in the 80 range, but Bachman has some really good stuff for sure. Shocked about this 
one. Mackenzie Gore, 59. Now, I haven't given up on Mackenzie Gore, but I don't think he's a top 100. And if you do, I think he's like that 99, 100 spot. He's just kind of fallen off a cliff. His mechanics have been sloppy. His stuff is still good, but he's been struggling. There's concern around the league about Mackenzie Gore. So I'm not going to be the one to be the contrarian and say that, no, he's going to be fine because it feels like if everyone's scared, I should be scared too. Mackenzie Gore is aggressive at 59. 58, Taj Bradley. This is another newcomer to a lot of lists. It's exactly what you'd expect from every race pitcher you're going to see now. Throws heat, has great breaking balls, has really good command. He's, he's awesome. He's going to be sick. He's a guy that, uh, another dude who can just fly up these lists. Quinn Priester, 57. Fair. I have no comments about that. Tristan Casas, 56. A little bit lower than Baseball America, but for a first baseman, I'm cool with it. I, I tend not to overrate first baseman on these top 100. Tristan Casas, though, the dude's built like a house. He's got great power. I love him. Luis Matos at 55. I've been hearing a lot about him. I don't think I'm as high on his others, but I think he's definitely a top 100 prospect. 54, Nick Prado. I don't put Nick Prado ahead of Tristan Casas. I think he's very good, though. I think he's top 100. Michael Bush, 53. There's just something about Michael Bush that doesn't make me think top 50. I think top 100 is completely fair. I think he is one of the better second base prospects, but nothing that he does particularly makes me crazy excited to the point where I think he's a top 50 guy. He is very good, though. Whatever. I'm nitpicking at this point. 52, Colton Kowser. Love him. Love Colton Kowser. I think this is a really good spot for him. I think he's a top 50 borderline guy. I think he's Christian Yelich like in his build and his ability. He's a great athlete. He went a little under the radar. I know he was like a number five overall pick, but Sam Houston State doesn't get the love he deserves. This kid's a stud. I love Colton Kowser. 51, Daniel Espino. Um, yeah, I, I think he's a top 100 guy. Nothing that makes me go crazy about him. Bobby Miller, 50. If you look back at my rankings, I was a big fan of Bobby Miller when he got drafted out of the University of Louisville by the Dodgers. Glad to see him in the top 50. This kid's an absolute stud. His stuff is electric. Electric factory, Bobby Miller. And of course, the Dodgers, because they're just the best organization in baseball. I hate them so much. 49, Harry Ford. Uh, aggressive. I know Baseball America is a little risk averse, and some of the other places are a little more risk averse. Keith Law, I think, is trying to be aggressive here with Harry Ford, be ahead of the curve. I don't think I put him this high, but I do think he could be a top 100 prospect. Maybe. I don't know. He's weird. Like, is he a catcher? That's the only thing really holding me back is what position does he play? But that's also why people love him is because what position does he play? He can play them all. Cade Cavalli, 48. Cade Cavalli is much higher for me. Cade Cavalli is a top 25 guy in my eyes. I was so incredibly high on Cade Cavalli. Again, look back at the draft videos. He was one of my top ranked pitchers in the entire draft. Like, I had him, I think, top 10 players. And then pitching wise, I think he was like my number two or three pitcher. Stud, absolute beast. I think he's going to be at the major league level next year and be really, really good for the Nats. He's just so incredibly talented. I love Cade Cavalli. I'd put him top 25. Khalil Watson coming in at 47. This is kind of right where it seems to be. He was super talented, dropped a little in the draft, I think because of his size, but the dude can flat out rake. 46, Brady House. Yeah, I see this everywhere. They just kind of group these shortstops together a little bit. Brady House, another dude, completely opposite build than Khalil Watson. He's a friggin', he's built like a house. I hate to keep using it, but we got two house names in this. Casas and House. Brady House is a stud. Nationals did a really good job the last few years with their drafts. George Kirby, 45. Uh, that feels about right. It feels a little low maybe, but George Kirby's really, really good. He's going to be at the major league level next year. Orelvis Martinez. Oh, I love Orelvis. 44, I think is fair. I'd probably put him top 25 as well. Orelvis, to me, the ceiling on this kid is to the roof. The ceiling is the roof. He's really, really talented. And he put up some crazy power numbers last year as a 19-year-old in A ball. He's sick. I, I really like Orelvis Martinez, a guy I'm going to be heavily invested in. Jordan Belazovic at 43. He doesn't excite me. I think he'll probably be a very fine major league pitcher, but I don't know about 43. I see him in like that 80 range. So I think this is a little high to me. Cole Wynn, 42. Everyone's excited about Cole Wynn. I need to do a little more research on him, but everyone seems to love him. So I, I, there's clearly some hype there. Brett Beatty, 41. I think Brett Beatty could be higher. I think he's in that top 30 range. Offensively, he's fantastic. He's a way better athlete than everyone thought he was. I think the craziest thing here is that he didn't rank him in the top 100 last year, which is just wild. He was great in the fall league, great in double A, great. And he did everything well. He's really good. I think he'd be at the major league level next year for the Mets. So uh, 40 to 30, I'm nitpicking, but I'm gonna back my Mets boy up here. Wow, Ronnie Mauricio ahead of Brett Beatty. Yeah, I just vehemently disagree with that. I like Ronnie. I think Ronnie's probably in that 50 to 75 range just because his tools are super intriguing and the fact that he is this big switch hitting young shortstop. Got pop. He just also has no plate discipline. So that's the scary part. I definitely don't put him ahead of Brett Beatty, but I do think he's really good. Vidal Brujan, 39. Yeah, sure, whatever. Whoa, Christian Pache, 38. No, 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 no. And I, I see he ranked him three last year. Everyone was aggressive. We expected bigger things. Yeah, he's just, he's just falling off a cliff. I just don't know if he's ever going to be able to hit the major league level. He has scared me. I think he scared a lot of Braves fans. Defensively, he's going to be one of the best gloves in center field in Major League Baseball for the next 10 years. The bat is the concern. Can he put it together? Maybe in that Braves lineup if they hit him ninth? Sure, but it's a worry. I can't put him at 38 right now. I, I can't put him really inside the top 75. Nick York, 37. Love it. Nick York, probably the best second base prospect in all of baseball. Mashes. Mashes, mashes, mashes. Remember when everyone thought they reached for him so that they could get Blaze Jordan? No. Nick York's a stud. I love this ranking. Very aggressive. Matthew Libertor, 36. The dude's boring but 
but he's always been good and he's still only 22. So yeah, I'm okay with that. Tyler Soderstrom, 35. I'm seeing a lot of people being super aggressive with him. I'm a little more cautious, but that's again, because he doesn't really have a position. Like, he's not a catcher. So ranking him as a catcher with that offensive tool, yeah, you'd be excited. He's just not going to play catcher though. So that's why I'm a little more down on him than having him this high. But I think Soderstrom, he rakes. I was wrong about this guy. 34, Alec Thomas, all around good athlete. That's fair. 33, Edward Cabrera, way lower. I don't really know how good of a starter he's going to be. I don't think he's an ace like we maybe once thought. He probably would be a sick bullpen arm. I, I think he's in that Rowanzi area of like the 80s. Josh Jung, uh, he didn't rank him last year, which is insane because Josh Jung has always been sick. So that's that's craziness. He wasn't ranked last year. Love this ranking. Probably top 25 more like it. He's going to come up and play a little third base for the Rangers this year and be sick. 31, Jordan Lawler. Okay, I I'm cool with that. Of course, he had like the injury, I think, to his shoulder, right? But I, I really like Lawler. He was my second ranked prospect, I believe, right? Or third ranked. I think he was my second shortstop behind Meyer. Whatever. He's he's one of the top guys in the draft. Love Jordan Lawler. 31, Jordan Walker. Love Jordan Walker. Look back at my draft stuff from 2020. I was crazy high on this kid and pff, hit it out of the friggin' park. Love Jordan Walker. This is a great ranking. I think he could be top 25 too. He's so talented. Like the ability that he showed at age 19 last year. Scary, scary good. George Valera, 29. I know a lot of people hyped about George Valera. I think I probably put him in that 50-ish range. Really good player. All around strong. And he's a New York kid as well. Brendan Davis, 28 for the Cubs. I've seen him as high as top 10. I've seen him as low as like the 50s. I think that this is probably a fair ranking. I'd probably be a little more aggressive though because he really did show up last year. And at 22, he's got some really exciting stuff about him. So I, I probably would put him top 25. MJ Melendez, 27. I love MJ Melendez. I think this dude's a stud because his defense is good and his bat's really good. 27 though, uh, a hard time doing that with catchers. I really do. You know, it's fair. It's fair with MJ Melendez. Probably more so in that 40 to 50 range for me, but it's okay. I, I like the aggressiveness because he really does have a lot of good tools. 26, Jack Leiter. Fair. I think this is kind of where everyone has him right around the top 25, which gets the top 25 started at number 25, Austin Martin. Not going to have him this high. He's a top 50 guy for me, not top 25. I don't know what kind of power production he's going to be able to put out there. He gets on base. He plays a lot of positions. He's valuable. He's going to be a super utility guy. But will he ever be like a multiple time all-star MVP? I don't know yet. The judge is still out on that. I think he's top 50, top 25. That's probably like the ceiling I'd put for him. 24, Robert Hassel, RH3, Bobby Hassel. I love this kid. I think he will be a top 10 prospect by the end of the season because Robert Hassel is that talented. A little power, just a little power and he goes top 10 no matter what. Athleticism, on base, selection. Like he just, he does everything you want to see. He is going to be a stud. Another guy I was freaking out about in the draft. I was begging he would drop to the Mets. It, it didn't happen. He's too good. 23, Zach Veen. Yeah, see, I, I put Hassel ahead of Veen. I love Veen though too. Like these guys I think are probably neck and neck with each other. Veen's got more power. Hassel's more of an athlete. It depends what you prioritize. I don't have a problem with this though. Veen is unbelievably talented. Another guy I was drooling over in the draft. 22, Brian Rocchio. Rocchio? Rocchio? Wow. I'm super surprised of him at 22. Were his numbers better than I thought last year? I mean, on here, he got up to double A. He hit, what, 15 homers? I don't think I have Rocchio in the top 25. I'm not gonna lie. I don't think he's a top 25 guy. I can't imagine Gabriel Arias is gonna get into the top 25 here. I think Gabriel Arias is my favorite prospect in that Cleveland organization. He's not ranked. Don't like that. Wow, Josh Lowe at 21, huh? I mean, he's good athlete. He's got power. I, I can rationalize it. I think he's top 50. I don't like top 25, but okay. I'm not going to get crazy about that one because I, I can rationalize why you would do it. It's very aggressive. 20, Henry Davis. Yeah, Henry Davis isn't top 25 for me either, but I get it. Number one overall pick. I like things about Henry Davis. Just isn't top 25 for me. Not even top 20 even. 19, we're going Reed Detmers. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I liked Reed Detmers coming out of college. He was a guy that I thought could have been in the majors like ASAP and he was last year. Good pitcher out of Louisville. They are a baseball factory. 18, we're going with Marcel. Hello, Meyer. Cool. I think he's top 20. I think that's fair. I packed his card. He's, he's a stud. He's really good. He's Corey Seager like. And Corey Seager was, you know, a, a top 10 prospect at times. He's really good. 17, Nolan Gorman. I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm not nearly as high Nolan Gorman on everyone else. I know that he has this crazy power potential. I'm just kind of waiting to see it. I don't, I don't get the hype around Nolan Gorman. I'll say it. The more I've looked into him, I think he's good. I don't think he's this unbelievable player that sometimes he's made out to be. 17 wouldn't be my 17th or highest player. Wouldn't probably be top 25 for me. Top 50? Yes. 16. Corbin Carroll. Corbin Carroll, again, another one of these Dimebacks players that are all around really talented. Unfortunate, uh, he missed a lot of last year because he got hurt early on, but he's really good. Interesting, he moved up in a year where he missed most of his season. <laughs> That's interesting to me. 15, Marco Luciano. Yeah, this is fair. I think Marco Luciano is a top 20 guy without a doubt. I'm not as high as I was last year, but I had way too, I think, high hopes last year. I was getting a little ahead of myself. We saw him look a little human last year. That's fine. He's still 20. He's still talented. 14, Grayson Rodriguez. Yeah, probably the best pitching prospect in baseball, arguably, if, if not the best. I really like Grayson Rodriguez a lot. Orioles, uh, he's going to be sick, especially with moving that fence back. That's a huge, we're investing in pitching over hitting move. 13, Diego Cartaya. Like Diego Cartaya, again, I'm just not as aggressive with catchers. I 
wouldn't put him at 13. I'm really interested to see. I mean, Alvarez and Gabriel Moreno, I guess, are both going to be ahead of him as they should be. 13's really aggressive. We saw Baseball America aggressive with him too. I'm interested to see. He did show a lot of promise though. At number 12, we've got Hunter Green. That is the highest I've seen Hunter Green ranked in a while. Did look really good last year. Struggled a little bit in AAA, but he's a freak. He throws like 110 miles an hour. I love Hunter Green. He's a sick athlete, sick player. I do think he's a really, really talented prospect. Top 25 for sure. Where's Nick Lodolo, by the way? I haven't seen Nick Lodolo's name. Is he going to be in the top 10? I feel like that would be crazy aggressive, but where's Nick Lodolo? Where's Jackson Job? I mean, we'll go through my snubs at the end of this. Noel V. Marte, 11. I think he's top 10. 11, that's nitpicking. He's unbelievably talented. Number 10, Anthony Volpe. Yes, top 10 prospect. I agree. He's uh, he's going to be the new friggin' Derek Jeter for these Yankees, isn't he? <laughs> they just, they, they don't really have too much off time. Anthony Volpe's crazy good. New Jersey kid as well. Shout out to New Jersey. Jack Leiter's former teammate. Number nine. Yep, here it is. Julio Rodriguez at nine is asinine. Julio Rodriguez, if he's not number one, he's number two. I can't even rationalize putting him at number nine. It doesn't even make sense because in here he talks about how he's a cleanup hitter who will challenge for MVP. 30, 40 homers with high on base and at least solid defense in right field. How is that not the number one or number two prospect in baseball? This feels like you choosing to put him at nine so that you can say you put him at nine just in case he isn't the... I, I, like, I don't understand this. There's no conceivable reason to put Julio Rodriguez, honestly, outside the top three. No conceivable reason. Who cares he doesn't play center field? Juan Soto doesn't play center field. Ronald Acuna doesn't play center field. Mookie Betts doesn't play center field. You don't need to be playing center field to be the best player in baseball. Mike Trout happens to, but let's be honest, his best position right now would probably be left. I don't understand having him at nine. If it wasn't 2.30 in the morning when I'm recording this, I'd probably be throwing shit. This is ridiculous. Nitpicky, yes, but this is a generational talent in Julio Rodriguez. He is going to be one of the best players in baseball. Number eight, Francisco Alvarez. I love Francisco Alvarez. I love the hype around him. I think he's top 10. Is he better than Julio Rodriguez? No, he's not. I mean, yeah, you dare say it. Mike Piazza like upside. I like to say it because that's what everyone I think kind of thinks about. Their build is vastly different, but I think the idea of a bat first catcher is what Francisco Alvarez is going to end up being like Mike Piazza was, but he's just not better than Julio Rodriguez. I mean, they're the same age basically, and Julio is just a full chunk ahead of him. Number seven, we're going with Shane Boz. Uh -huh. Maybe. I, I think I like Grayson Rodriguez more, but Shane Boz is unbelievably talented. He's, he's top 15 prospect, I think. Seven, that's super aggressive. He's going to be sick, though, at the Rays. He just won't pitch that much because that's just what the Rays do. He'll probably throw like 120 innings. Number six, Gabriel Moreno. Yeah, I'm seeing this. I think Francisco Alvarez is the number two guy, of course. Clearly, they're going with Gabriel Moreno here, which is what also Baseball America said. It's just, I feel like we need to see more of him. I know he looked really, really good, and it was a small sample, so like, I'm just cautiously nervous. I think Gabriel Moreno is a top 20 guy. I don't have him as high as number six in my rankings. You'll see those at the end of the year. He's unbelievably talented. Top five now. We've got CJ Abrams at five. Fair. Super talented. Missed a lot of the year, of course, because he had like that knee injury. The ceiling is the roof for him as well. He could be a guy who could be a top prospect by the end of the season as long as he's healthy because he really is that talented and that athletically gifted. Number four, Spencer Torkelson. This is pretty much the consensus spot for him. I don't disagree with it. The numbers he put up last year in his first ever minor league season were scary. What, he hit like 30 homers and he walks a ton and he's just, he mashes. He's sick. We knew this. Number three, Riley Green. Cool. I'm fine with him ahead of Spencer Torkelson. Um, I'm, I'm assuming Bobby Witt's going to be two, right? It has to be because Bobby Witt is typically three and you put Julio two and Adley one or Julio one and Adley two and Bobby three. Those three are interchangeable. Riley Green at three is aggressive. I don't know how he's ahead of Julio Rodriguez though. I truly don't. They're the same age and Julio Rodriguez is just better. It's just better. So to me, I don't get it, but Riley Green is a top 10 at the absolute worst. He's a stud. Number two is going to be Bobby Witt. There we go. Okay. And number two, I'm fine with it. He had him at 27 last year, which also felt like just felt rough, felt a little low there. Uh, I'm cool with Bobby Whitby being that too. He's a stud. Start him at shortstop next year, Kansas City, please. He's an MVP in the making. Generational talent. So good at everything he does. Love Bobby Whitby. And then number one, of course, is Adley Rushman. Yeah, I mean, that's the consensus number one prospect in baseball. It's either him or Julio, at least in my eyes. I'm fine with Adley being number one. Again, generational type catcher. He's going to be a stud. MVP type player. No doubt. So we don't see Nick Lodolo. We don't see Jackson Job. We have Julio Rodriguez ranked low. Who else is left off this list? I mean, I feel like there's some big names. Who else am I forgetting? Did I mention guys that I, I was wondering where they are? Yeah, so no Lodolo, no Jackson Job, no Williamson for the Seattle Mariners, no Matt Brash, who's a guy who's been really, really good with the Mariners. No Garrett Mitchell either. I, I'm surprised about that one. I couldn't believe it. No, Lodolo might be the worst miss though. Lodolo is like arguably a top 25 prospect. He's sick. Left-handed pitcher. I, I can't believe he's not on there. Is he missing anybody else that I can think of? No Jeremy Pena? Where's Jeremy Pena? This guy's going to be really good. Look at the numbers he put up last year in AAA. It's a reason the Astros might not have to sign Carlos Correa. 
Jeremy Pena looks really good. He's a different player. He's put on some weight too. He's going to hit pop. I'm also surprised about, uh, there's no Christian Hernandez from the Cubs or Emmanuel Beltre or any of the international guys really from the last international signing pool. Some really talented players there. I know they like had a small sample, but put up some good numbers. I'm shocked none of those guys made it, but Nick Lodolo has to be the biggest miss. The fact that he's not on this is just, it's criminal. I will say that it's, it's a bad look. This list overall, I don't truly understand what his rankings look at. I can't tell if it's a ceiling thing. I can't tell if it's a floor thing. I can't tell if it's a risk averse or super risky. I, it, it just kind of feels all over the place. It, it almost feels safe at times, but then at other times it doesn't. I don't know. I overall don't think it's as bad as people are giving it. Again, it is prospect. It's, it's kind of subjective. Like these rankings are subjective at the end of the day. And I'm sure when I drop my top 100 ratings, Keith Law would rip mine apart. I'd welcome him too. I would love to do that collab. Keith Law reacts to my top 100 prospect rankings. I'm totally in on that. And I challenge him to do so if he does see this video. I hope you don't take it personally. It's not meant to be shots. I disagree with a lot of the stuff you have on here. I also agree with a lot of the rankings. I think Julio Rodriguez at nine is asinine. I think not having Nicola Dolo is crazy, but I also think he did a lot of stuff well. So I'd love to know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Do you like these rankings? Do you hate them? How do you feel? Drop a like on the video if you did enjoy it and you want to see me do more of this. I can react to all the prospect rankings we want. We still got no baseball. I need content. This is content. Let me know if you like it. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the content as well as my second base rankings that will be dropping later this week. Follow me on all my social media at Giraffe Nick Mark. Links in the description. That's where I'm wrapping up today's video, guys. You know the drill from here on out. This right here is my video ranking the best first base prospects in minor league baseball. So click that if you have not yet seen it. And this is my catcher ranking. Click that if you haven't seen it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all tomorrow for another video.